In the digital age, online fraud and scams are becoming a more common hazard. These dishonest tactics use the anonymity and worldwide accessibility of the internet to target susceptible people and businesses. The strategies used by cybercriminals are numerous and constantly changing, ranging from identity theft and online auction fraud to phishing emails and phony websites. Human weaknesses like greed, fear, or ignorance are frequently used by scammers to trick their victims into giving over money or disclosing private information. Internet scams can have serious repercussions, including lost money, compromised personal information, and even harm one's image. Welcome back to our YouTube channel and thank you for joining us. In this video, we will discover the story of a man who did one of the biggest scams by selling a fake airport. If you are new to this channel, do well to like and share the video and hit that subscribe button to join our channel. By simply telling the bank he needed the money to build an airport, a Nigerian bank director was able to outsmart a significant local bank and defraud it of a staggering $242 million. In reality, Emmanuel Nwood was a director of the Union Bank of Nigeria until he used his knowledge unethically to phone a director of a Brazilian bank on behalf of another prominent banker. When Wood needed a sizable sum of money to develop a fake airport, he called Nelson Sakaguchi of Banco Noroeste in Brazil and claimed to be Paul Aguama, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He succeeded in convincing Nelson Sakaguchi, the director of Brazil's Banco Noroeste Bank, to invest in a fictional new airport project in Abuja, the capital of Nigeria. Banco Noroeste collapsed in 2001 as a result of his scheme, which at the time was the third largest bank fraud in history. Nwood convinced Mr. Sakaguchi to invest in a yet-to-be-built airport in Abuja in exchange for a $10 million commission. The total deal was $242 million, with $191 million in cash and the remainder as outstanding interest between 1995 and 1998. When Banco Santander, a multinational financial services firm based in Spain, attempted to purchase the Brazilian bank, Nwood's deception became apparent. A big disparity was discovered during the joint talks about the acquisition, a sizable quantity of money that made up a sizable chunk of the bank's value and liquid capital seemed to be inactive in the Cayman Islands. An international criminal investigative team comprising law enforcement officials from Brazil, Britain, Nigeria, Switzerland, and the United States was established as a result of this. To apprehend Nwood, Nigeria eventually founded the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC. Conversely, Nelson Sakaguchi was taken into custody at John F. Kennedy Airport in New York and then flown to Switzerland to stand trial. Nevertheless, in the midst of all of this, the Banco Noroeste's owners, the Simonson and Cochrane families, spent $242 million to turn things around. However, the bank's demise was inevitable as it finally failed in 2001. Following a protracted court battle, one of Nwood's accomplices admitted to the crime and was sentenced to two and a half years in jail with a $25.5 million repayment mandate. Nwood and another of his accomplices subsequently entered guilty pleas and were sentenced to a combined 25 years in prison. Additionally, his possessions were seized and given back to the victim. With Nwood's conviction, the then newly formed Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, secured its first significant conviction. After being released from jail in 2006, he later sued to reclaim some of his possessions, arguing that they had been obtained before the offense. He was successful in regaining assets valued at $52 million. He allegedly asserted in 2021 that he was not aware of the $242 million airport fraud. Two decades prior, he claimed that he had been forced to enter a guilty plea by his legal team. Nigerians call scams like these, 419, a reference to Article 419 of the country's criminal code, which deals with fraud and it remains one of the biggest frauds in history. Frauds pose a significant threat in today's interconnected world. Whether they are internet scams, financial fraud, or elaborate schemes, the impact of fraudulent activities can be devastating. Individuals and organizations must remain vigilant, stay informed, and take proactive measures to protect themselves against fraud. This includes practicing skepticism, verifying information and sources, and implementing robust security measures. Thank you for watching to the end. Please do well to leave a review and comment on what you think about this video. Until next time, stay safe.